Hello and welcome to part one of the HDL to VHDL translator tutorial series. Uh, this is just going to go over some preliminary aspects of using the tool and things that you'll need to know. Um, right off the bat, a very important part of the translator is to have Python installed on your machine, specifically Python 2.7. 2 it should also be on your system path, meaning that you should be able to go right into your command line, type Python, and see the interactive interpreter. If you cannot do that, you're going to want to add it as uh, to your, uh, your path on your environment variables. And you can either Google that or I can include that in the description for this video below, but that is a requirement for the translator to work. Uh, another thing we're going to need here is Quartus 2, specifically 13.0 Surface Pack 1 installed. We'll be using that later in the tutorial series. That can be downloaded from, I believe, the Altera website. We'll try to post a link for that as well. And for the purposes of this video, I'll be using this demo folder here, which has some HTL files in it for our use, as well as a testing directory uh, that we'll be using shortly here. And then on top of that, we also will be using, because I don't have it right there, the HDL translator itself. So, <clears throat> right off the bat, let's take our HDL translator and extract it. And I'm going to extract this to, oh, my mouse is freaking out here, to our demo folder on the desktop. Okay, so again, this is just this folder on the desktop. Here's our test directory, our HDL file that was included, and in this zip folder, we should have extracted a code writer, a parser, uh, templates for VHDL, a translator, and a README document. Um, if we open up the README, it's a little write up on how to execute the translator, but we'll go over that in video here shortly. Um, it also has some directions on how to unzip it, where, why, everything else in between. If you do have any feedback on the translator itself, uh, you can contact me, lich2ja at cmish, ooh, spelling error, dot edu. You may or may not have a spelling error by the time you get this zip file, that's okay. Just include the dot and that shall get to me. But basically, now that we have our translator extracted into our demo folder, let's open up our simple HDL file to see what we'll be translating. So as you can see, there's not much to this chip. Uh, simple and or, it's going to take four pins, four input pins, P1, P2, P3, and P4, and send it to three output pins, LED 1, 2, and 3. This is a bit of foreshadowing for the section where we get to use the physical hardware, but all you need to know now is that it has four inputs and three outputs. And the internals, the guts of the chip, it's anding together pin one and pin two, uh, it's anding together pin three and pin four, and it's sending those each out to LED one and LED two, LED two respectively. And the next set of ands, it's pretty much doing exactly the same thing. It's anding together P1 and P2, P3 and P4, and then it's oring the results of those two things together and sending that to LED3. So it's it's pretty simple, um, pretty basic chip, but it just is for demonstration purposes to see how our translator is going to function, and we'll be able to see that on the hardware soon. So in order to run this on a simple chip, HDL chip, what we would do is we'd open up our command prompt, and change directory to our demo folder, or wherever your HDL files are that you extracted the translator to. And I should mention that as well, that you can extract this translator to wherever on your uh, file system, just as long as it's the same location as the HDL files that you'd like to translate. So let's go to our demo folder, and once we're here, we'll be able to run Python, 
translator.py and the name of the single HDL file we'd like to translate, which is simple and or.htl. So let's run that. And you'll notice that the translator gives you a little feedback here. So it located the file we were talking about. It's going to output it in the same directory. Uh, it knows our chip name is simple and or. And as you can see, it found our four input pins, our three output pins, and the two local pins that we made up in our parts. And, and then it exited the program, so we're just back here in our directory. So now if we look over into our demo folder, we'll find simple and or .vhd, which is a VHDL file, which is executable, well, I guess readable by the Cordis software. But let's open that up as well. And if this is all gibberish, that's no problem. But the short story is, here's our chip name it was able to discover in these few places. Here's our input pins, our output pins. And you'll notice it took those handful of AND chips and converted them to AND keywords in this language. Same thing with the OR chip, converted to an OR keyword. And you'll see our three LEDs are still down here in our parts as output. So good, everything looks like it translated no problem. So what we'll do now is close all this up and we'll show part two functionality of the translator, which is uh, directories. So you can pass the translator an entire directory of HDL files, so long as they're all combinational chips, and it should translate them all. So let's open our test directory. And here we have two more HDL files. So let's open up advanced and or. And in here it's very similar to our previous one with a few modifications. So now our output LED, instead of having three separate output lines, we've just bussed LED uh, with three bits, and we've referenced them individually in here. So it's still anding together P1 and P2, but now it's going to LED uh, with the subbus of zero, and same thing with P3 and P4, it's going to LED uh, index one, and our LED 3 is, of course, that LED of index 2. So 0, 1, and 2 is our three outputs. And lastly, uh, we've taken some of our middle functionality with these repeating ANDs and made a subchip called AND group. And you may have noticed that that chip was in that same directory, AND group. So here we're referencing another chip. And let's open up that chip and see what we have. So AND group is, if you can believe it, even simpler than the one we just looked at. It has four input pins, A, B, C, and D, uh, two separate outputs, and all it does is AND together A and B and output it, and AND together C and D and output it, which was basically all we were doing in our simple AND or, whoops, which was ANDing together pin 1 and pin 2 and outputting it, and ANDing together pin 3 and pin 4 and outputting it. So it's literally just taking this functionality and putting it into a separate chip, um, just for the sake of using a separate chip uh, to test translating it. So now that we see that we're using busing and we have another chip here, let's see what we can do about translating this uh, directory with these chips inside of it. So in order to do that, we'll go back to our demo folder. And what you'll do is very similar to translating just an individual file where you'll call Python take my mouse cursor out of there and call the translator file again and this time just pass it the name of the directory of the HDL files that you'd like to translate so that's test directory in our case and we'll run it so it found our files inside of our directory and it actually is going to export them inside of test directory which is convenient and it found our advanced and or Here's our four pins still coming in. Also found our output pin, our three uh, output LED with busing. Then it's local pins still being used, our P1, P2, P3, and P4. Then it found our second chip, AND group. Here's A, B, C, and D for AND group. Out A, B, and out C, D, we don't use any local pins. So lastly, what we'd like to do is open up this test directory. And as we can see here, we have our 
uh, advanced and or and and group translated to VHDL files. And well, we'll have a look at what those look like in our next video in our, when we import them into Cordis. So in a nutshell, that's all we've done here is we've unpacked our translator into our directory that had our HDL files inside of it. And through our command line, we've uh, ran our translator on both an individual file and a directory of HDL files. So that's all we have for running the translator, and we'll see you in the next video for importing into Cordis and then eventually pushing this to some physical hardware.